Good evening, all. Calling meeting number 1,666 of the Southern Berkshire Regional School District School Committee to order at 6.04 p.m. on Thursday, April 11th. Unfortunately, um, I have to start with a downer. Um, most of you know that we lost George McGurn um, actually two weeks ago tonight during the or night wife found him in the morning. Um, George is a major loss for us, as many could attest to, as Dennis shakes his head. He was somebody who was initially, you know, not 100% positive behind us, and particularly when it came to the Edgarvon School, and George has become the champion of all champions of our district. And worked with other community members from all of our towns, worked with the school committee. I don't think we could have found a better partner. Aside from being brilliant, he really, you know, committed to our district and making it be the district that we know it is becoming and it's taken major steps. So with that statement, I ask for a moment of silence for George, please. Hopefully he will be proud of our upcoming actions as we move ahead. Um, thank you. And we've already discussed a couple of things to do in memoriam to George. So if you have any ideas, because I've also discussed it with his wife, Mary, you know, we wouldn't want to go ahead doing anything without it being something that Mary approves of. And talk about dedication. Mary showed up to our Transcend community meeting this week, oh, wow. and she said, Oh, she's oh here. <laughs> Good thing I'm telling the truth about you. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. And she said she knew George would want her here. So yeah, there she is. You have, you know, our condolences. And you're going to have to carry two mantles now. <laughs> um, with that, let's go to um, our school committee approval of the minutes of March 14th, 2024. Do I have a motion to that effect? Motion to approve Second. this. Okay, so we have, that was Nancy, and then we have Jim as a second. Any comments on it? All right, seeing none, I will take a vote. Kyle. Yes. Carl. Dr. Stewart. All right, I'll come back. No, no, now, can you hear me now? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> Carl. Okay, okay, yes. Thank you. Okay, David. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Oh, There's no. no one. I'm just checking. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone on the other side? Nancy. Yes. Jim. Yes. Art. Yes. And Pawnee's a yes. Thank you all. Um, moving on, on our enrollment report. Uh, yep. So on to the, or not to be in your packet, is the enrollment report, and we are holding at 624. No changes. That's great. Any questions for Beth there? We like hearing that type of a report. It sure do. Public comment. Oh, wait, 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 you just went wild. 
public comment? Well, no. Let's. Do we have any correspondence? No, but then we have these two. Oh, sorry about that. I I've used a public comment earlier. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll do it in the order in which it's printed. <laughs> um, do our student representative report. Mm -hmm. We have in person. Filling in my I'm Eve Murray, I'm a senior, and just, I believe two weeks is when you guys were in I guess. So over the past two weeks, we've had actually a lot happen at our school and our community. Um, mainly, most importantly, we had an exchange program. I believe we had 11 um, people from Hong Kong come, and they lived with people in our community. It was a wide range. It wasn't just high school students, it was also um, elementary students. Mr. Miller actually hosted a uh, student, and there was also a student from Monument High School, I believe, who is just good neighbors with a member of our community who also hosted one of them. So really brings the community together, I think, is what, um, like, basically was what you could say that happened with the Hong Kong students. We had a bunch of, um, a bunch of like, clubs come together, and, like, basically the entire purpose of their exchange was to um, come back. I mean, the, the, U, the UN has 17 sustainability goals, and the second one is called Zero Hunger as the name entails, basically is trying to combat the hunger issue throughout the world. And that's like every single thing that the students did was in some part related to combating that goal. So for instance, we had a model UN meeting, which was specifically about zero hunger. And we all came together and we were countries and we tried to figure out how exactly to combat that goal. So we had a big meeting like that. Uh, they also traveled to every April Hill farm mm -hmm. and they learned like Ability like farming techniques to help with the hunger problem and like farming and all of that. They also there was a culinary trip. I don't know where they went. I had some flying. Tigers. Yes. I could be wrong. Yeah, but that was it. <laughs> and they made like soups out of stuff they just picked off the ground and we actually served it last night at the community dinner. And everyone's alive. Yes. <laughs> and no problems. Their stomachs are all fantastic. So. <laughs> Uh, they, the students actually left this morning for New York City, but tomorrow a few uh, students are going back out to New York City to meet them again, and we're going to tour the Mall UN building, or that's not the Mall UN, the actual real UN building. <laughs> and, so yeah, and then I believe they depart the day after that back to Hong Kong. But overall, I say it was a successful endeavor, and we believe they really like, grew the community together, so that is like basically the main thing that's happened these past two weeks. Also, spring sports have started up. They have officially started all of their games. At least every team has competed at least in one game or match. So shout out to our spring sports teams. We have a break next week. So that's exciting for the students. <laughs> and adults. Five, five, five. And adults. <laughs> yeah, teachers as well. <laughs> yeah. And then also just, I guess, an update on senior stuff. We have a lot of like our senior uh, Activities are being in the works. I believe later tonight you guys are voting on the senior cross trip. If you could do that, we'll be answering yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. So seniors have committed to colleges, stuff like that. So I think overall, Mount Everest is in a very stable place from a student perspective. So I, that's all I have tonight. Thank you guys. I'm impressed with you. <laughs> no, you're not getting off that easily. <laughs> First, do we have any questions from any member of the school committee or comments? I just want to say, if that's a substitute, you did an absolutely great job. Thank you. I was and very short in but hey, I worked my tail off. I got <laughs> and do you know where you what you're doing next year? I do indeed. Actually, I'm going to the University of Rhode to study physical education. Oh, excellent. Yes. Awesome. Wow, impressive. And you want to tell us how your start was in the spring sports season? Oh, I would love to. I played tennis. And, All right. Uh, yes. I played and won that, but I won. Oh, there you go. Excellent. That's a win. That's a win. You have a question? Uh, no, I just have a comment. Um, going back to the um, Hong Kong trip, when my kids were here, one of them just turned 30. I just tortured Jesse with that. <laughs> that would be the youngest who goes to you, too. <laughs> um, that uh, we, we, in those days, we did an um, um, exchange with uh, Egyptian kids. And it was an extraordinary experience. It was done over a couple of um, different years. And it was an extraordinary experience. So it's very exciting that that's come back. And uh, seeing as my tennis husband 
and kids used to be on the tennis team, the tennis coach. Congratulations. <laughs> So, but I'd love to see more of that. It was really, I'm, I'm glad it was as as successful as. Um, I as personally got to, um, I didn't post one, but the guy from Monument, of course, their family can't post a student at Mount Everett. So when the student was at Mount Everett, he was following me around as a shadow. Nice. And I think personally, like the bond that him and I like, I I cried a bunch yesterday. Oh, so wow. Yeah. I'll be real with you guys. It was quite <laughs> an emotional, oh, emotional yeah. thing. And I think Mr. Mona can speak as well because he had one. But, they're, like, it's not like they're here for two weeks, but you really like form a, a very strong bond with them. Like all of them, I feel like they have bring like really good friends from that. Even though, of course, they're going to be across a lot of oceans and a lot of miles. I feel like those kind of connections that I'll keep the rest of my life. Well, think of it this way: we have Zoom, we have other ways <laughs> to make connections, and. I just had a comment just to kind of mirror what he um, what he was saying. We had a student at our house as well, and it was an amazing experience. She yeah, like got along really well with my you know middle school kids, and she shadowed a different high school student. But yeah, it was just overall an awesome experience. There was a lot of tears today <laughs> with my family too. So, but we're looking forward to WhatsApp and Zoom and all these other things. Mm -hmm. So it'll be like a friendship I think that will last for a really long time. I really think so. I had some crying uh, people who came over after the event because I couldn't go, and both the both our Mount Everett students and the student from Hong Kong say it was the most wonderful experience for them. And um, Abe, before you leave here, if you have other suggestions for any way to grow and that program and what came out of it, but I heard that all there was was singing, dancing, and tears <laughs> as you cleaned up the American Legion all. Oh. It was a fantastic experience. I mean, honestly, I think Miss Graham, she, like, she deserves a lot of credit for all this stuff. I and mean, obviously there's other parts to it, but I mean, everyone is all having to do fantastic. Honestly, like, I mean, I think it's just, I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't see the behind the scenes as much. I get to experience the fun parts, but I think it's like, really like a very well-rounded organization to have with our exchange program and our like international trips and all that stuff. Like, I mean, I'm getting back. Like, I went to Italy and like I'm going to Spain on like a virgin trip this summer. I think like our school was very special in that way that like I think all of our trips are like very successful and everything we do is great in that part of it. Thank you. I think he should write an, an op-ed for the newsletter. <laughs> yeah, and do you know you're in the presence, I've been told, of the most important person in Southern Berkshire County, Sarah. Who? Me? Why? Do you? To open up butternut. That oh. is it. Oh. Yes, we oh. did. Oh. They came, we came over, we all went over and went sledding. <laughs> so we still Dang. had some trails that had decent snow coverage, and then a little bit more that we got, uh, we went over and... They brought sleds and tubes, and they hiked up, and everybody, was, they sledded for about two and a half hours, so. You never experienced Exactly. Yeah. So I was going to wait to do it later. You're welcome. To, but I have to tell you. It was you, so much fun. It was great. The kids who came over yesterday, yeah. it was, do you know that Sarah Pollock open butternut. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, no, but yes. Yes, we don't know, but everybody was just, just say yes. Just say yes. yes. Yeah. I don't know sure. if we could put it up, but I have a fantastic picture of yeah. three of our seniors yeah. in the the Sternagel tube oh, from yes. 15 years ago. Oh, not quite ten, yeah. 10 years ago. And I have the picture from 10 years ago. They recreated side by side oh, that's cool. yeah, the three cool. kids. I don't know if you could put it up for my phone. That's Probably not right now. Wait, well, okay. we can yeah, try. not right now. Yeah, we can you, put it up. Aiden, you wanted to add to that. I actually, two more comments I yes. thought about information from our school. Um, you said new stuff, but I realized our newspaper, I don't I think it came out within the last two weeks. It's our final edition. Yes. I, was, I wrote an article on sports, but. It, so yeah, that's a good part of it. It came back this year. I think we probably mentioned it at one meeting, but it's come back this year. It's revamped back better than ever, I think. So shout out to our newspaper. And also last week, our FFA team, we went to the FFA State Convention and we competed in a few events. You did? We did, yes. We did not win, unfortunately, uh, but we did compete in a few events and we just got to go. And uh, like I said, great what time. What did you compete in? 
<laughs> what you compete in? Uh, the quiz bowl. Oh, just cool. Like, just oh, nice. Facts about the FFA. We unfortunately, we lost to the powerhouse of Norfolk, but <laughs> it was a close battle. <laughs> <laughs> we were also down a player. It's a fun fact. We are the only team ever in the history to be with three instead of four. So shout out to our team. That's right. That's <laughs> yes. right. Exactly. And yeah, I think that's all I can think of off the top of my head. Oh, got a comment here. Yeah. Yes. Then your newspaper, mm -hmm. it's awesome. I, I think so. Shout out to it, it Alice awesome. for that, really. I think she's kind of been the head of like getting behind the newspaper and like getting that back. So she really deserves some credit. Who was this? Who did you say? Alison Cernick. Uh, yes. And I think the uh, teacher advisor is Miss Simpson Gomes. So mm -hmm. also good on her because like they've really done a fantastic job with the articles and everyone who wrote them like they're doing great. So. Newspaper team, 10 out of 10. You should consider going into public relations. <laughs> I mean, physical education, I do an internship with Joe, and I really like like doing that stuff, so that's definitely number one. But if somehow that fails, broadcasting, you guys will probably see me on the news somewhere. And I'll <laughs> Thank you so much. Any, Thank you anyone else? That's what mine there. there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You, Thank you, you. did us proud. <laughs> yes. Thank you. You guys have a great night. Thank Thanks. you. You too. Thank you. I love it. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, do we have a spot, student spotlight? Sure do. Sure. All right, so I'm going to be really brief because um, this was really a smashing success because of the hard work and planning of my elementary curriculum leader and uh, fourth grade teacher, Mrs. James. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Um, we uh, had a great night on March 27th. We invited all K or pre-K through fifth students in all three schools to Family Math Night. Um, so I'm going to share with you kind of what we did. We did get everybody in there first, like all the parents, and I did show them a movie on. Um, why did they change math? And we did a little bit with Mike Flynn, who Mike Flynn has actually been, thanks to Julie Dolan, <laughs> working with a lot of our elementary and middle school teachers to revamp how we teach math. Um, do we want to show that video, that short little clip? Or no? So can you just click on the why did they change math? It's a quick little video with Mike Flynn talking kind of about why. Oh, this was in the PowerPoint that I did. Hey, yeah, just yeah, wait for the guy that's having a second. You should you make bad money. So you would work at a hundred. I did not share my audio to the uh to um, the audience. I wasn't sure that that was necessary. So let me stop sharing. Nerd wallet. <laughs> if you work in math education, chances are you've been asked some variation of this question. And I know when I've been asked this question, I, I sometimes find it hard to give a really quick answer uh, because there's a lot to it. I mean, first of all, uh, math hasn't changed. Uh, the way we teach it's changed, but um, fundamentally the math is still the same. And, and then you get into all the nuances there, and it's hard sometimes to find a way to explain this that resonates with people, especially if they don't have a lot of background in math education. But I think I found a great way to do this. So let's think about the way we teach reading. Now, in reading, when uh, kids are learning to read, we focus on three primary areas. We, we check on how well the kid's reading in terms of fluencies, uh, how well they're reading in terms of accuracy, how many words they read correctly on the page, and of course, how well their comprehension is, how well they understand what's written on the page. Now, if we ever had a kid who could read the words really accurately and fairly fluently, but at the end of their reading, they couldn't tell you a single thing about the book they read. We wouldn't say, what an amazing reader that kid is. Uh, we would probably find a book that is a, um, an easier book where the comprehension can also develop along with their accuracy and fluency. We never would just like move kids through books just because they could say the words really fast. And yet, let's think about how we've taught math. Of these three things, which hasn't really been the focus of math education historically in our country? And you guess it, comprehension's not really been a big part of it. Uh, we've often just focused on getting answers accurately and very quickly. So speed, or fluency, and accuracy were sort of the focal points of math education. Now imagine if we actually taught reading the same way we historically taught math. 
Uh, essentially, we'd be teaching kids to say words really quickly. And how would that work out? Imagine right now, just trying to read this text. Uh, I want you to do it. Just read this as fast as you can. And chances are, you are reading this with 100% accuracy, and you're probably reading it very fluently. And yet, are you enjoying what you've read? Can you tell me anything about what you've read? Um, probably not, right? And imagine if kids went to school their entire time, and that's how they learned to read, is just to say words really fast. Uh, we probably, if you interview kids coming out of high school about how they felt about reading, they'd probably say, I'm not really a reading person. I can read, but I don't really get it. Um, I hate reading. Like, all of those things would, would make sense because they would just be saying words without any real connection. There's no meaning behind that. So where's the joy in it, right? So the, the, we wouldn't be surprised that kids didn't like to read. So are we surprised that lots of people don't like math? Uh, think about it. If we teach kids to get answers really quickly without any understanding, Where's the joy in math? And so this is why math looks different today. It's not that the math has changed. We're teaching math because we want to build okay. on the comprehension. Yep. The critical thing to remember. We can stop there. So that was just a short video that the parents got to see, and I had them a captive audience for a solid, you know, five minutes. <laughs> um, so I did um, force them to sit through that because so often as a teacher, I get hit with that same question. You know, this isn't how we learned how to do math. Why can't you just teach them their math facts? Mm -hmm. um, so what we did with the math night is we came up with um, different uh, different activities that built on that comprehension of math. Understanding base 10, understanding how numbers work, um, and they got to experience playing games, and there was a scavenger hunt, and we did prizes, and we had, um, 10 teachers helping out. We had fun. So here's just some of the pictures um, that we have. I love this picture because my son's actually in it, and this little girl thinks he's a giant. <laughs> she was precious. She was absolutely precious, precious. this little one. Yeah. But what was incredible is the um, community came together. There's Mr. Miller learning some math. Um, this was all the, this was, me when I'm presenting wow. all the families. So we had over 150 people show up for this family math night. Um, kids ranging from that little two-year-old girl <laughs> who's about as precious as they get, all the way up through a couple of middle school, high school kids. So um, we had a few of the, we had three of the NHS students helping. All these pictures were taken by a senior, Shira Sawyer, really, really have to shout out because she did a great job. Here are the teachers that, some of the teachers, we have a couple who are pictured here, um, who came and they helped run activities. Um, we had a table set up where kids got to do some estimation and they won a prize if they were closest. We actually somehow managed to get two winners in New Marlboro and then two in Under Mountain just by chance, it's fantastic. <laughs> Um, we, this is some of our older students. They were learning a game called Tax Collector, in which they have to find uh, prime numbers, but also they pay taxes based on, well, they pay taxes for any factors that come off of a number. So their goal was to kind of pick the higher number that didn't have very many factors. So their taxes were lower. <laughs> it, it, it timed up nicely with tax day coming up. Um, some of my other, these are some of the, Families, you can see there's a mix of kids. Um, there's Jody Hutchinson is doing some, she's doing the tax collector, so she's crossing off their taxes they had to pay. It was kind of fun. Um, and then we have some of our first grade students. There's uh, Ms. Shai over there. She's running one of the centers, and Lindsay Fogel, she's running one of them. And I think what's great, and when I flip through these, is you see the kids really interacting. The families are interacting. I mean, I love this picture. Just a beautiful little mm -hmm. moment. Um, so, um, and we had kids sitting down with other kids, parents talking with teachers. Um, I don't know, and the games were fun. And every family, if you can see right here, every family is getting one of those folders with every activity we did. Mm -hmm. So they got to bring them home take them home and give everybody a set of dice. Um, 
It did feel a little like gambling because we had dice and cards. <laughs> I was going to say, I got my taxes done. I got my taxes. <laughs> really? And you got some money for it, too. <laughs> so math is about. Um, we, and here's Marky's doing a game. She, she was there with her family and just like sat down and took a crew of kids to do, because there were so many kids there. Um, the, we did some stuff with geometry with the little ones. And you can see like just the age range was great. There was a scavenger hunt that went through the hallway. So these are some of the older students and every kid got a prize. Every kid who did the scavenger hunt or did three activities got a prize. Um, this is this little one here was yeah. really great with Beth and I. Yeah. <laughs> she gave she gave us, she gave us a, yes. She was thing. she was very uh, entertaining. Yes. Um, <laughs> We're our great. morning message, Mr. Miller did a great job of getting us excited about the family math night. So <laughs> the kids were having fun with that question. Um, just, it was a really wonderful event. A lot of people like to thank, I mean, you know, Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Miller. Yeah, I know this little oh, one, I can't. She's, oh, she's like, really giving it to me, yeah. <laughs> she, she was really telling me. <laughs> yeah, she was. Um, and our high school NHSers, I'm very proud of them. One of them's mine. Um, they did a nice job of helping out. Our culinary department, Connie Gott, she had her students make number cookies. Um, so you can see those right here. Um, Mr. Miller and Mr. Uh, Sullivan got pizza because we realized we have a lot of people, we need to feed them more than cookies. <laughs> five and seven, too. Yeah, yeah it's like dinner time. So it worked out really well. I don't think there was any leftovers. Oh, too I know. cute. Oh, sorry. Kind of good. Bit. But like, I just love like these images where you see, you know, a dad and their son mm -hmm. playing a game, playing with numbers, mm -hmm. building that number sense. Um, like the, the, the kids just had a great time. Families, you know, you can see parents connecting here. You can see kids in the background playing together. Honestly, it was probably one of the, my favorite nights ever at Southern Berkshire. I just felt like the whole community was there. Everyone had a great time. Um, a lot of the families came up to me asking if we could do more things like this. So wow. the answer is yes, right? Like, yes. Always yes. We, I love the fact that we could get so many people. This is the scavenger hunt. Somebody had to find a dime. So, <laughs> um, so I just thought, and this is, I mean, this was a better picture of how many people were there. Um, and that's not even everybody, because some people showed up and trickled in later. So all in all, it was a really great time. I'm really grateful. Uh, Julie, I have to say thank you to you, because you kind of put the bug in my ear and actually kind of told me to do it. <laughs> that was serious, yeah. That was very loud. Yeah. And, you know, but in a, in a great way, I think all the stuff you've done with Mike Flynn and helping our teachers to understand how to teach math in a different way and helping our families now, I think it's just a really, um, it was a great experience. I'm proud to be a part of it. I'm proud of all the teachers that were a part of it. And uh, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just add that um, we did not anticipate um, that kind of turnout. Um, and I think, uh, I mean, the energy was palpable. And what it makes so evident and clear is that um, families are yearning for these kind of return to school events. You know? mm -hmm. So as a result, too, we will have other curriculum nights. We'll bring back some literacy right. nights, um, some early childhood education, and so on. But definitely another math night. And another thing, a testament to what Jane did. Um, is she ensured that teachers, not just families, were included from all schools, but that we had teachers from all three buildings as well, um, planning and participating in the games. And so it was really the perfect kind of example of a community um, inner district, you know, inner school uh, event. So I think that's partly why we got such a great turn. But it was super fun. And I love too that she made it accessible to everyone. So even if you're only there part of the time or you came for the whole thing, you went home with the tangible things and games you could play with. Mm -hmm. and, and in our RSVP that I sent out a couple of weeks prior, I actually had a line item that said, if you can't make it but would like more information, and I probably gave out another 20 folders to families mm -hmm. who weren't able to attend. Um, we tried to schedule it between sports seasons because I know how it is. Um, and it, but everyone's got a life too. So um, I was happy to do that. So the kids got the same games, were able to play them at home with their families. And Nice touch. Yeah.
Awesome. Questions from a really nice thing also that I noticed as I was going around and getting to interact with families and um, is that no one was on their phones. No one Whoa. was on their phones. They were so engaged. Mm -hmm. um, nobody. I mean, I, I only had mine to take out a picture and I forgot to take one, but then Shira was taking them. So it was great. It was really like parents in their suits from work or whatever were sitting on the ground with their kids playing. I mean, that, those are priceless I moments. Part of that too is because they were manipulative, yeah. so yeah. people had to use their hands for it. Mm -hmm. And also that Chris Thompson shut off all access. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Their strategies. <laughs> strategies. Uh, so um, um, I want to hear if you, you could explain how it got from something you had to something you created to something you set up for the whole elementary school. Because that's an incredible turnout and engagement. Well, we had last year in our planning decided that we really wanted to make sure that we increased the number of family nights that we were going to do. And um, Jane applied for the stipended position that included coordinating such things. Um, but we didn't get that position in place. So that's why we only got to do one this year instead of two. But um, I, I don't like to say I dictated it to her, but I just said, <laughs> this is what we're doing, and um, let's roll. So fortunately, she is also our math leader and is very invested in um, conceptual learning for math and has done many book groups with Mike Flynn. And uh, so she was definitely the right person to take it on. So even though it was a directive, it was also a passion of hers, which is why it was successful. Yeah. Yes. If it had been a directive to someone who wasn't passionate about it, it would not have gone as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think um, we've done over the last two years, whether it be through the HQIM grant or, and that, again, Julie, um, or our work with Mike Flynn or the, you know, the monies that we've had for our math um, development and PD, it's really changed and shifted a lot of our teachers um, practice and I think um, like truly I mean the nice beautiful part of having that grant and being able to go into other classrooms and see um, how teachers have shifted their to conceptual math and really comp so the kids are comprehending what they're doing has been powerful so thank you to anyone who's helped to make that happen which I'm assuming it's all of you. <laughs> um, but also, it, it, that, and then finding resources after doing all the training and the workshops and the um, learning labs, finding resources was easy because so much of what we do with our new math program does involve gameplay, does involve working with this base 10 system and really strong hands-on number sense. So it wasn't a huge stretch. And as soon as we offered it, it I asked for help from teachers Everybody was wow. We had ten. We had ten people right off the bat, ready to go, and a couple late bloomers came in, and then. And Beth and Julie supported it. Yeah. It was tight. <laughs> was tight. It, but but you know you you want quality activities. You have to give you know compensate, compensate people yeah. for their time. And every teacher there was so excited. As teachers, we met together to kind of develop our. Um, games. Some of them came with games. Some of it came from me looking and researching. Um, but it's out there, so you just have to take time to look for it. And I, again, I was so proud of that night because it was so much fun. Um, I left there just feeling like a parent. I mean, so many parents came to me after and said, "What a great night it was!" And can we please do more? And and I think they enjoyed it. Um, and it was all grant funded. It was all grant funded and. I had a captive audience of parents <laughs> for, a, for a, a while to kind of be like, hey, this is a question that comes up all the time. Here's an answer. And I know it's not the most exciting video, but it really does get the point across that we can't just teach fluency and accuracy. We have to get kids to understand it. I also absolutely love that we had little ones mm -hmm. on the way to becoming SBRSD students. So yeah. I think what you did, all of you, in putting this together, it really is emblematic of what we want to be as a school district. <laughs> so for me, it's a major thank you. I'll just add one little thing. 
things like this, we should, the school committee should be invited if it's appropriate. That is absolutely a good point to take. I never really <laughs> So we'll just say that we did publicize it in all of our newsletters with a lot of events. There's a ton of events, and I, we could we could be calling you every day with fun yeah, things. Yeah. But um, we we try to make sure that you know the events ahead of time. And as I always say, please check your event calendars. Just go on. We try to post everything out there so that you guys can um, get to what you can get to because there's a tremendous amount of things going on. So we love having you come and join yes. us every time. And I absolutely acknowledge everything that Beth just said, but it'll be really nice. I'm going to be a pain about it. You are. If the, I am. <laughs> if the person supervising the program, setting it up, say, hey, this is appropriate for really school community members. Yeah, no, I, it's a great um, feedback for me because I, if I do They're another one you. of these, I <laughs> it's on me, it's not me. don't you worry. But you will also be receiving uh, not formal but <coughs> personalized invites to our open house and arts festival later in May. So look forward yeah. to that. I mean this attaches to also the exchange program that was never you know, it, it's important that that be tacked on to the to do list of letting the school committee have it, its own invitation. I'm not being swell-headed about it or anything, you know, and I read a lot of, of the material, but sometimes you just don't know, is this really something we should be at in any number? So that, that's just that comment. No, I appreciate that one. I, I would like to say, too, um, that uh, one of the things that I noticed is how confident the kids looked in when they were showing stuff to their parents and to their sibs and stuff like that and I just think that was I don't that that to me I, I'm a math hater <laughs> well they're also keen to show off their rooms and their desks and yeah that's right but I'm saying I know you're in here all the time but if you think about the culture we live in nowadays right unless you work in, in the school or have some you know, kind of association, you don't get to go see the inside that often. Mm -hmm. So when you do, kids are like, check it out. Mm -hmm. you know, they were definitely eager to share. Yeah, yeah, that shows, that shows, and that's that's really great. And I love doing that. I think what was, what I loved seeing was um, the parents and the kids talking about, like going on the scavenger hunt and just being like, well, which one's the square? And like, asking, <laughs> you know, and you know, and you see these little tiny people and, it just was so great. It was a really fun time. So I'm grateful that I was a part of it. I'm grateful. I'm proud of the teachers who were there as well. And everybody it was just such a fun event. Was there any formal um, assessment in terms of, you know, getting feedback formal from <laughs> teachers and so families? We didn't send anything to the families. Um, that was actually, that came up at our faculty meeting, is that maybe we should do some sort of a survey to the families. I put a link for a survey to the families in educating our eagles, so. That's right, that's, that's right, you just told me that. Yep. So, um, so um, we do have a survey coming. <laughs> yes, we do. No, but you did do internally collective feedback. But internally, I did ask teachers to, um, you know, I well, any of the teachers who were part of it, we have a uh, glows and grows page kind of a thing. So what went well? What could we tweak at our next one um, as the people who were facilitating it? Because there was, you know, there were certainly, the beginning was a little Harriet because there was, uh, well, we, didn't expect, we didn't expect that many, many people, people yeah. and we got 150 families. people. So we were yeah. handing out name cards <laughs> and doing all this and trying to run the video or the, my little presentation at the beginning. And I think, you know, that it's tweaking. It's really tweaking. But the actual activities and fun and, and just the fact that we had the culinary department part of it, the mm -hmm. NHS, NHS kids, kids yeah. the um, community, community yeah. everywhere, it just felt really, it felt good. It felt like a nice thing. Thank you so much. I just want to say, I saw Beth afterwards. <laughs> she was like, beyond beyond ecstatic at great. this event yeah so it was a lot of fun hey. yeah nice thank job you. Awesome. thank you thank you thank you okay 
If I could just make a comment. Oh, yes. By, by background <laughs> and education, I'm a math and physics major. Okay, that that was what my degrees were. Okay, and basically the quality of what you folks have done is just outstanding in terms of what the program is that you've put in place to, to basically get our kids more interested in, you know, in those functional areas, you know, and, and how you've gone about it is just, you know, it, it's just mind shaking you know, <laughs> on what the good work is that you've done. You know? Thank, so. you. Dennis, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. With that, thank you again. Thank you. Be well. Enjoy your night. Uh, we'll try. <laughs> you just made it much better. <laughs> student That's spotlight right. and student reps. Um, do awesome. We, do we have any public comment? Oh. You can go, Dan. Public commenting? No, this is in general. Oh, no. On our agenda. <laughs> Anyone out in the zoo world? I don't see any hands up. In that case, we shall move on. Just excuse me. This is yes, it's I am dealing with an injury. Um, our business manager's report. Please go right ahead. And again, introduce yourself first. I'm Jonathan Cloud, um, consultant for the Engine Solution. And um, before you and your packet, you can see you have some warrants uh, for your approval, some health insurance, as well as vendor and payroll from the approval warrant. Uh, this is a time of the year, as we enter the last quarter of the fiscal year, that we're trying to just clean up our, our budget, you know, making sure that um, we are in a good place. On June 30th, and also you know, looking forward to the new fiscal year. So basically, uh, you can see what you have in front of you with some little notes in terms of what the various expenses are, what they represent. Okay. Do I have a motion from someone for approval? Motion to approve the warrant. All right, that was a motion from Nancy Worthington on approving. Um, the warrant report. We have a second. Sorry. Thank you, Art. Okay, any discussion? Questions? In that case, I'll start with Kim. We're voting. I think that's a. Is that a yes? That's that a was yes. definitely a yes. yes. <laughs> Okay, Kyle. Yes. Carl. Carl. All right, we'll get back to him. Art. Yes. Jim. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Dennis. Yes. David. Yes. And Bonnie. Okay, thank you very much. Anything else? And Carl, and Carl, and Carl, yes. Thank you, Carl. All right. Anything else you have for us? I do not. I have nothing at the moment. Um, but I did have been working with Beth around trying to, uh, working on a more complete report that we can provide to you. Uh, hopefully by next month that will give you sort of an idea where we stand with various accounts both uh, with expenditures as well as revenue. So uh, Beth did give you a template that she would like to see and we are working on uh, making that happen. Okay. Um, a vote to accept grants and gifts. Are you going to put this forward? Yeah, I can do it. Or, Thank or, you. Or, so we just, um, actually Mr. Thompson, do you want to talk about the uh, yeah, I just brought up the best attention that we had an offer to, um, in uh, assistance to our drone program, there's a, a thing called a NIST drone course, uh, National Institute for uh, Standards and Technology, something like that. Anyway, <laughs> forget what it stands for exactly, but uh, it's a very typical sort of industry standard drone training course. It's a series of like two gallon buckets and they're organized in various ways and there's pictures inside, letters and bullseyes and stuff and you have to take your drone over it and take pictures. It's kind of the way um, 
<coughs> yeah. uh, a lot of drone operators train, uh, emergency personnel train, and that kind of stuff. So anyway, I had a, a, per, a person I know from previous experiences uh, has one and has offered it to the school oh. to keep uh, for work, and it's valued at about fifteen hundred dollars. Set up, so. Cool. so we put Thank that. You. We put that. If on we're okay to get it, I would go pick it up. And uh, he said I need a 12 passenger van. To bring it all haul back here, and oh. we'll store it probably out at the yellow house and use it out on the field. So uh, with the drone kids. And we happen to have a 12 passenger van that's that you right. can use. To be <laughs> all right. Well, that's nice. Um, do I have a motion to the effect? So moved. Okay. All right. So that's Art, which is nice. a second to accept the Civil Air Patrol donation to the drone program of launch pads, buckets, and poles worth approximately fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. Let's start differently. David. Yes. Dennis. Yes, and, and if you need some help in moving that stuff, just let me know. Okay. okay. <laughs> wow. Yes. Thank you, Dennis. Sarah. Yes. Okay, Nancy. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yes. Um, Kyle. Yes. Carl. Yes. Um, Kim. Yes. And Bonnie's a yes. Thank you for once again. Another initiative doing more and more with less and less. Oh, <laughs> Thank you to the state <laughs> for inspiration. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> um, we have any budget transfers? No. Okay. Any special business with district member towns? Nothing outstanding, unless you have something. No, I don't have anything outstanding. Chairman's report. Well, um, Basically, I said earlier um, how much I appreciated the work that went into um, a number of events in the past month. And we will continue to work on some of the logistics related to the events so that we're sure protocols are being followed and that we're sure that um, appropriate invitations, et cetera. I, I did want to bring up two things, and I don't know what, how this, um, can, um, is, is what the sense of the school committee is, and Beth, what you think. It is, in terms of our programs at different events, theater programs, music programs, in the program there are acknowledgments. Mm -hmm. I'm the school committee is not, has not been acknowledged. So if you go back into, is there a reason for us not to be acknowledged? Um, I, it, not that I'm aware of, but I also, um, I would have to, I, I don't think so. Um, okay. So I, I think I got it from your earlier message um, tonight mm -hmm. about um, making sure that there are acknowledgments and invites and um, mm -hmm. duly noted. But I, I don't know. I, I, I there is nothing from our perspective that I didn't that we went up and took your names out of the program. So uh -oh. um, you know. So I think I feel like that's fine. I hear what you're saying and. We'll make sure that um, the school committee is acknowledged in every program. In the program. Then the second part of it is, is there any reason why if we chose to, um, that you know of, and maybe Carl would know, if we are allowed to take out an ad? Oh, interesting question. There, that is a little bit... Um, that is a little bit trickier. There is okay. some law, um, and I don't have it on the tip of my tongue, but uh, I know that um, you do have to be careful because you it's not like you're, unless the committee puts in their own money, you mm -hmm. can't normally right. take public funds and use that to take out mm -hmm. an ad, typically. Now, there might right. be some exceptions to that, but um, it, it used to be, there used to be some language around that, so we could check into that formally, but if the school committee on their own collected and said, I'd like mm -hmm. to take out an ad, that could absolutely happen. Okay, 
So it's what I've noticed is with the congratulations that go in at music events, at I think you could just theater. Be acknowledged. Could be. Yeah, I think you could just say that you, that's what you'd want to see in the program. But, but I'm saying in addition, we might want to celebrate by putting, I don't think these ads are very expensive, and it might be part of Nancy, our community outreach um, and public relations. I don't know if anybody has an opinion on this, but whether you would want to do it or whether you think it's something um, you know, that we should do. David. Um, I'm sure no one's surprised that I have an opinion. Uh, <laughs> Shocked. Yes. I have one uh, <laughs> Okay, Kim. Regarding publishing the the acknowledgments and, and thanks and so on for people who've contributed to the programs, um, I, I don't think that taking out an ad makes sense. Putting aside the potential legal issues, we can simply publish such lists in an article in the Sheffield Times, the town newspapers. We could write an op-ed. There's lots of ways we could communicate that that don't cost anything and don't even put us in any potential risk of running afoul of any particular legal issues. But second, a special acknowledgments and thanks are for people who have done something specific to contribute to whatever the event is. The there's no reason or no appropriate reason to acknowledge the school committee as doing something special since it's literally our job to make things things okay, happen. Okay, I think you're not understanding what I'm saying. The one is just where they print. The, and Beth's going to take care of it. Thank you. Want to get to, out the gravel? The the sec, you know, thank you to the secretary. Thank you to this. So there's a whole list at the end, the end of the program. I'm just saying that the school committee should be on that list. Separately, there are ads like quick print congratulates all the mm -hmm. actors and actresses who. You know, took part in musical musicals. Yeah. So what I'm saying is nothing that if we wanted to help support. I don't know what it costs. I don't know anything mm -hmm. related. Usually, you, you, you pay for an ad. It's in all the. They run it in all the programs for the year. Like, can you? Do you have to submit it in the beginning? And I can you submit know. after? I don't know. Kim might remember, is, but so I know that you like because. Butternut puts one in, and we put one in right in the beginning, and it runs through mm -hmm. the whole year in all of the programs. So this so it is could just be like a generic, like, right? A gene you know. Exactly. Yeah. So the idea is not anything in terms of us, right? But it's that we, in part of our community outreach, is saying mm -hmm. the school committee is acknowledging, you know, congratulates yep. everyone who's taken part in. And I could find the pricing for you. I hope. Okay. I <clears throat> but I wanted to get a sense there. Yeah. Kim? I'll also check the law. Yeah. And thank you. And Beth just said if you didn't hear, she'll check the law about that. Kim? Chris, you may need to unmute her. You can't. You can only ask. Okay. Sorry, rescuing a dog in the middle of the road. <laughs> Not that dog. My day is just always like this. So, um, I think that would be the while. Um, sorry. So, I agree with David on this for the acknowledgement thing. I mean, maybe I misunderstand too, but it is. The acknowledgements are for something that yeah, is it. done for people helping <clears throat> the musicals of the play. It's not just because we had it in the building, you know, get an acknowledgement. I mean, so for me, I don't think we need the acknowledgement. But we acknowledge uh, by supporting financially. Yeah, but we, we, the, they do a lot of fundraising, they do a lot of stuff, but yeah, we support it, but that's part of who we are. We don't really need a shout out. It. You know what I mean? I mean. Okay. I hear you on that. That's just my opinion. I just don't think we do. I mm. it's like parents go above and beyond to help. It's the you know 
the people that run their kids back and forth, you know, 50 million times to get to rehearsal. I mean, that's what the acknowledgement should right. be about. But if you look at the you know, not just because we are allowing them to do something. If you look at the acknowledgements in the programs, just get a sense. Oh, I know what that. they look like. I buy an ad all the time. <laughs> no, n- not the ad. The little thing at the end. No, any, uh, any, I, 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 yeah. any other opinion? Nancy. I just have a question. Um, if it does, if it is something that we want to do, is there equivalent, um, equivalent ad, ad or acknowledgement stuff for sports as well as for the arts? It would be any case where. The <coughs> That's what I'm asking. Is, is if the if the sport are the sports okay? We don't we don't hand out uh, programs. Yeah, programs. Yeah. That's what I thought. Uh, right. right. Everything now, like rosters and things like that, are usually online through Arbiter Sports and stuff like that. That we don't hand out a separate pamphlet okay. in each game, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, I just want to be sure that whatever we do, whatever yeah, we yeah. decide to do, yeah. goes across all right. all boards. Yeah, because I think it's it's, it's definitely worth. If I think it's worth considering. Worth considering. It's so just maybe it just should the just be support. referred to your committee for discussion <laughs> before any action is taken. It. All right. There's a lot still to go, so I will turn it over to Beth. Thank you. Sure. Um, so quickly, I um, there's a lot to talk about and a lot that's been going on, but I think most important to note um, now is the... Um, House Ways and Means uh, released their budget yesterday afternoon, and tomorrow morning I have um, the opportunity to um, meet with the Berkshire County Superintendent's Roundtable at the Berkshire Innovation Center um, and give a presentation to our delegation um, uh, around uh, all the topics uh, of interest regarding the the budget. So. Um, of course, I was charged with giving the presentation on rural aid and what got hit um, was rural aid. Um, so I did just reach out to Julie Kelly, who works with um, the Mass Association of Regional Schools um, as an advisor and expressed my concerns and asked for some additional talking points. And she was amazing. She got right back to me. Um, but. Um, what they uh, decided to do was we were um, getting $30 per pupil um, for our Chapter 70 increase, and they proposed raising that to $104 per student, which sounds really exciting, mm-hmm. um, but for us it results in about $65,000 of an increase um, from $20,000, roughly 19-something, um, of an increase. Um, at the same time, um, if they change rural aid from $15 million to $7.5 million, um, and they did a little bit of a change to potentially how it's calculated, um, that we received um, for our third year of rural aid, we've only just qualified for the last three years of rural aid, um, we got about $250,000. So half of that, obviously, is, is 115. So even with um, the increase in the per pupil and this decrease in rural aid, we are down $100,000 um, mm-hmm. already, which doesn't sound like a lot, but to rural school districts, it's a lot of money. Besides the fact that the um, competitive grants are that are available, which we've also been writing like it's a full-time job, mm-hmm. um, and, and luckily, knock on wood, getting, um, to the tune of $1.5 million, it's down by 18%, um, the availability of these grant funds. So this is really, there's no nice way to say this, hamstringing uh, rural school districts in making progress. And I feel like this is a tremendous blow to where we are. We've been um, openly supporting the Student Opportunities Act, and we don't begrudge that. But at the same time, this people with the Student Opportunities Act, which is um, 108 schools or districts in the Commonwealth versus the 211 who are um, in the hold harmless, they're also getting that increase in per pupil and they're getting the $259 million of um, Student Opportunities Act money. Um, The other thing that they did is um, they took out a new teacher diversity initiative for $10 million. Um, They cut completely any initiatives related to social and emotional health. That's $6 million. And I just find that, um, and, and any educational improvement 
um, grants are down $11 million. So I just, this is a problem for me, um, morally. And <laughs> I mean, I'm really just having a visceral reaction to, um, to this part of um, the budget. So I'm gonna, um, I'm, I, I do know that according to Julie Kelly, they have submitted, um, I think Rep um, Blaze, um, has submitted uh, some amendments asking to it be fully funded, uh, the rural aid be fully funded. Uh, another problem with it is rural aid, we don't get noticed if we're even gonna get it or how much we're gonna get until about halfway through the year, um, which makes it in, impossible to budget or plan for, or do what we want to do um, associated with that. So um, we were gonna try to ask for that to be something that is um, considered because it wasn't really monetary it was just timing mm -hmm. to give us better you know planning mm -hmm. so there's a lot of advocacy I think that we can do I will start tomorrow um, because it's already a scheduled opportunity but I think after that and depending on what we hear um, and uh, I think I will come back to this committee and she suggested that we all strongly um, put together some letters and communications and get them out on behalf mm -hmm. of what's happening so is that an in-person meeting tomorrow it is it is so i should really so, leave right now right. Uh, for me but um, <laughs> but uh yeah so it is tomorrow wow good luck good luck thanks well i'm um, you know Thank on, you on behalf of all it. of you so and and all of our students and family so um um they, they this isn't a good this isn't this isn't good when I'm in this mode. So, um, but anyway, um, I will keep you updated. But I will leave it there for now and talk about the other stuff later on when it's when it's our turn. It, I have to tell you, this was after we had had all this positive feedback and flying high, and then you get whammed this way. It, it we will have to be help to be advocates. So, Beth, thank you. I know it's demoralizing, but keep on fighting the yes, good fight. We're, we're all going to do that. Okay. Madam Chair, can I make a, a suggestion? Of course you may. I, I think that it would be very helpful if, you know, we got our five towns together to basically get them engaged in some public speaking regarding you know these problems that have just been raised you know on the finance side to where you know that i think we should feel free for our five towns to have access to their town officials to basically go through and 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 i guess i would request that maybe you put together a document that we could all yeah. basically share and take to our towns to say, okay, you got to help us on this, right. you know, or otherwise, you know, you're going to end up being the one that pays the bills. And so you know, you're, gonna, you're, I, you're public. I'm going to let Beth respond to that since she has the info. Well, so we, I have um, reached out to, um, Representative Pignatelli um, to come and help us organize a um, community event and um, with the hopes of um, inviting not only our local um, boards of selectmen and uh, um, finance committee meeting, school committee, community members um, to talk about our concerns and our issues but also to see what's going on here because I think it makes a real difference but we were also were hoping mm -hmm to invite some other um, of our uh, you know initiatives and programs that we are working with through DESE because a lot of our grant funding as I said has been reduced significantly and I think unless you come here and see it in person you don't really understand what it means to do what we're doing um, the way we're doing it so um, Smitty was very responsive and said gave us a date um, but it didn't work with everybody else and so I want to reach out and to him again and organize well, I, a larger I, I, again I, I think the five towns are a better answer because he's stepping down I, I understand that but he's, he's going out of business I understand but he's yeah. not going out of business now he's voting right now so we need to advocate with the people who are currently here and the five towns so I will absolutely do what you're suggesting though as I promised my superintendent's roundtable group um, at, that I would 
put together talking points and advocacy points that, and we would all get back together and meet and plan when we get um, this this advocacy meeting together. But prior to that, we could be writing in and expressing our opinion. Beth, thank you for taking this on because we know you have nothing else to do. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> gonna be super fun. No, really appreciate it. It's very important to all of us. Yeah, yeah. okay, I'm gonna turn it over now to Julie. So as uh, Beth just mentioned, we do not get front funds from the Student Opportunity Act, but we are obligated to complete it, and we wanted to share with you what we had put in our submission so that you would know. Um, so um, the Student Opportunity Act has us look at data to identify disparities um, in learning and identify what students need extra support and then to come up with a plan to meet that need. So the next slide, um, it just tells you the different components that we have to put together to give you an idea of kind of the amount of work that goes into this. So we summarize what our plan is going to be. We analyze data. We come up with a three-year plan. Um, we have many ideas, as you have seen, in our strategy for continuous improvement. And that's where everything came from. So there's not going to be anything here that you haven't heard before. Um, but then we have, if you go to my next slide, please. So. Um, we have five things that we highlighted as um, ways that we're addressing disparities um, in student achievement, and then we needed to pick one. So clearly we highlighted early college, innovative pathways, Burke Studio Experience, our early childhood program, and our high quality instructional materials. Next slide. So uh, during our data analysis, we, um, noted that MCAS between 21 and 23 for math, every grade level had a percentage of students that increased um, meeting and exceeding expectations. We attribute that to our new HQIM, iReady, and um, we noted conversely that in ELA, we have predominantly gone down over those years. But, good news, we used that data to inform the decision to buy a new high quality instructional material. And we are in the first year of doing that right now, so we absolutely expect to see that data go up the way math did. So that was part of the data analysis for deciding what we were going to highlight for the Student Opportunities Act. So we selected as our focus um, even though we will continue to work on all five of those things, but for our focus as far as the Student Opportunities Act is to focus on the high quality instructional mm -hmm. materials that will help all students make gains. So in the report we had to identify what we are currently doing and I tried to make these words bigger and I was unsuccessful. So um, for math, we have had three years of intensive training and best practices in math as identified by NCTM. Professional development around analyzing data to drive instruction and in learning labs to support the increase of student engagement in mathematical discourse. And for our first year of ELA implementation, we have provided training on how to use the new program, PLC time to collaborate with colleagues and determine what components will be used at each grade level to support our vertical alignment, and coaching with a focus on the science of reading. And so then the next step for the SOA was what does our next three years look like? So we're going to continue to run learning labs in math and using data to drive our instruction. We're going to continue to provide professional development for our ELA program to improve our MTSS process, which is the process we go through to identify students who need extra help um, and to give them the targeted intervention. And we're going to continue to provide common planning time to our teachers so that they can look at this data together and plan for what our students need. 
So this is what I was telling the school committee about. Um, I had said that we had this was due by April 1st. Um, and uh, I just, I, I had asked Julie to put together this um, slide, the slides for the committee because they ask for, um, to ensure that the committee is aware and that the public is aware of what our initiatives are. However, as I said to you, we're not using anything that you didn't already approve. And it's directly from our strategy for continuous improvement, which the committee has already approved. But I thought it would be nice to just pull a few things out and highlight the specifics. Um, again, it's a, it's a enormous amount of work. Um, so it's a good thing that our plan is one that is um, what, a living, breathing document that we're constantly um, using and, and improving as, as it goes along. But um, it, then we were able to, to complete this. Um, it, it is a ton of work for, you know, it's another one of those, I like to refer to them somewhat as an unfunded mandate of reporting <laughs> that we're doing on a regular basis. So thank you for putting that together. That we don't get paid for. No, nope, it's zero. <laughs> <laughs> But we're doing the work. We're doing that regardless of what they're giving us. So the 259 million that went to other people. Thank you for depressing us. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I, feel, I, I mean, I think, do you feel like you want to take just a, a vote? I, 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 I just noticed that other school committees around just have said that they've seen and they're aware of what we entered on our SOA. On our, Student Opportunities Act report. I don't know if you. I don't know if we formally need it because it, it is on the agenda. I could just show that if the state ever asked. But well, it'll take us two minutes. Then, if you all would right. Like that. I think it's, it would be lovely to have it. Even though it's, would you truly state it so I could have somebody make the motion? Uh. <laughs> So, uh, so <laughs> all, all you're doing is that we're just we're just saying that endorsing. we have yes that we're endorsing the report, uh, our our filing of our Student Opportunities Act report um, that was made on 4-1-24. Um, so moved. Second. Okay, that was Art, and then a second by Nancy. <coughs> Any discussion? Thank you for a really good report. Yeah, David. Uh, if we're going to be voting on these reports, shouldn't we be voting on them before submission? As I said, um, we didn't need to vote on it because I had reported to the school. I mean, we didn't have to do it before submission because you'd already accepted every line of the, of the strategy. strategy for continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. All we did was pull from that, put it into this form, but we just were giving you a refresher of what was in the Student Opportunities Act till now. And it was due on April 1st, so the timing didn't really line up between what we were doing and there was nothing different. So yes, ideally it would be perfect if we did it before, but because there was no, there was really no change, not even a significant change, there was nothing different that we added to it. It's just what bucket we put it in. Um, we wanted to get it in on time and now we're coming to you and sharing at this. Date. And basically what we're doing now is just endorsing what we were informed of prior. prior and now we're endorsing what has been filed so a vote yes means you are endorsing what we were previously informed of in terms of the submission for the student opportunities act um any other questions comments all right let's vote art yes jim yes nancy yes was that a yes. oh okay Sarah yes Dennis yes. David abstain okay Kyle yes, yes. Kim <laughs> yeah it's a lot of votes okay and is Carl there I don't see him oh, don't somebody see him. wake Carl up. <laughs> <laughs> and I vote yes okay thank you I appreciate so it I I know mm -hmm. it was done that way but I appreciate it yeah okay um on that depressing note, the person who takes care of our mental health. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to say some positive things. Yes, she is. Yes. You're going to be the warm light. I'm going to be, yes, right. I'm going to be your warm one. Good, good comment. Here's your QR code. Um, <laughs> as vibrated as we are. <laughs> uh, first 
first off, I want to invite you all to Special Olympics. It's going to be mm. May 1st. It's at Monument Mountain as it is in the backfield. May 1st, 9 a.m. Um, several of our students are going to be competing again. It's always a great day. Of course, it's going to be gorgeous that day, so we're really looking forward to that. 70 degrees and sunny. So please, please come and join. It's always a, a very fun event, and our students look so forward to it. Um, just to update you, there's some information. We're continuing to take in registrations for pre-kindergarten and kindergarten. The screenings are now planned for June 14th and 17th, since we had that little snow day on April 4th. Um, and right now, we have 49 registra registrants for pre-K. I'm not exactly sure of the number for kindergarten. I wasn't able to get that before you know, writing this up. But uh, more information is coming your way, and we're really looking forward to having our um, kinder pre-kindergarten and kindergarten screening fair. Many of our professionals have signed up to take part in that. It's always fun. And um, parents are reaching out really regularly about uh, joining our programs, especially uh, I get the calls for pre-K. So I'm going to talk about pre-K. We get calls every day about joining our programs and uh, looking forward to more information coming your way around that. So our mental health team, to our point, um, are continuing to conduct screenings. They're working right now with grades 9 through 11, and they're using the Beck Depression Inventory to get some information from our students uh, to see where we can support more. So that's happening right now. We have already uh, reconducted screenings from uh, for grades uh, 4, five, 5, and 6, and um, I'm gathering information from our mental health team who has been fantastic and I'm going to provide some data to you in a more formal, formal manner once the screenings are done at the high school level. I do want to comment that we continue to um, work with McEnany and CHP and the Southern Berkshire Collaborative Care Coordination. I meet with them. I meet with uh, each of those organizations once per month, but also on an as-needed basis. And then we have a logistics meeting where all of us meet together, and it has been incredibly helpful. We've done some data gathering, and so far we have um, collaborated on 27 students this year. Wow. And it's wow. been really, really amazing. And I feel... Can, may I interrupt you? Yeah. Can you explain what a, a typical collaboration, or if there is such a thing? What does it look like? Um, for example, there is a student who's struggling in whatever way. Let's say we're concerned about anxiety. That's a very common thing. Anxiety is a very common thing. And the parents have taken them to the pediatrician and they're very concerned and have expressed that it's impacting them not only at home but at school. There is a release if the parents choose to sign it upon speaking with the pediatrician um, to speak with the school about that. So then when we have our, our meetings, which are scheduled, we meet you know regularly every month, they, they share like, okay, we have this name, here's the, here's the release, we, uh, we can share information with you and we talk a little bit about what the concerns are. And if we don't have a release on our end, we speak with the parent and get a release on our end. It allows us to collaborate, talk about what services might be beneficial to a student. And what it has done, I think, is increased capacity on both sides. Um, I had a meeting this morning with CHP, and I was able to provide some information regarding some summer programming for a student that they weren't aware of, for example. So um, I think it's, decreased our number of referrals. I will tell you that our number of special education referrals have increased. That is a trend across this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a byproduct of what we've dealt with over the past few years. But um, our ability to collaborate has diminished the number that we would have received. Mm. And we've all found that. Doctors have attended IEP meetings. Um, really? Psychologists have attended p meetings, yeah, or even pre-meetings, mm -hmm. to determine what could we be doing for students. Wow. So I really need to highlight how incredibly beneficial that's been to all of us. So mm -hmm. I think Jim. Who's administering the BEC? It's uh, our mental health team. So it's our school psychologist and our school adjustment counselors that are administering. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. You're familiar with it, of course. Yes. <laughs> okay. Any any questions? I have more to say. But oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's just something I wanted to share with you. So over the past 15 months, we've been conducting our tiered focus monitoring, which is a, um, essentially an audit that DESE does with um, 
th three of our programs, English language education, special education, and civil rights overall that we uh, provide in the building. It's really a compliance review, but also it's a program review to look at how we are servicing kids. And um, they came on Tuesday to review files for special education and civil rights. And today they conducted some interviews. Uh, Mr. Miller had an interview, I did, and then there was a, a, a parent, um, a teacher, a couple of other folks were interviewed, and there were also surveys that went out to families. And Beth and I had an exit interview at the end of all of this today. And in um, 45 to 60 days, we'll get a final, re business days, we'll get a final report but we were given some feedback today that um, I think we found to be quite positive. Uh, the, the main comments we've heard were that our files are meticulous. <laughs> Thank um, you, Sam. Yes, yes, so, and, and you know, a model for the state was, was said to us. Mm -hmm. So um, that they had a lot of positive feedback in the surveys that were sent out, that there was a high res um, rate of response, more, much higher than they typically get. They usually get 20%, maybe, or a little less. We were at 37% in the end, um, which is very good. And um, there were a lot of positive comments that I'll share with you once that final report comes out. But um, I think it was a real tribute to all the people that work with our students here. And they highly focused on inclusion and how much we include our students, all students. Wow. And um, all of the programming that we talk, talk about here with you all the time, including what was discussed just regarding the SOA, et cetera, is just indicative of the inclusive practices that we use here to make sure that our students are involved in all aspects of our program. So, And they picked up on that quickly. Oh, they 100% they picked up on it from every conversation, from every review they did it was it was interesting one of the things she said to me which for me was a big deal not for you all but um, she was talking about records and we had a situation where a student who was 18 years old it didn't attend the meeting they didn't sign that they were in attendance in the meeting and um, it was a zoom meeting and I said correct the student did not attend she popped on the screen and said I'm sick but it's okay that my mom's here and so she said that mm -hmm. and I was able to tell not only that, it was written in the notes. Oh, <laughs> nice. So mm -hmm. they were just like so pleased because that never happened. So it was a very positive feedback. So more to come right. once we get the nice. report. Okay. Right. Yeah, she's being very modest and we're, we're holding back because they were so um, delightful and we really just want to wait for the final report so then we can give you all the really exciting numbers. But um, they were lovely. Um, um, you know, I had to give, I had a little interview where we had to talk about our whole philosophy, but, um, you know, we're very, very lucky to have Sandy in the role that she's in and her experience, and I think it resonated with our whole culture and what we believe um, students need and deserve, and it's also resonating back, um, and it's coming back in, in feedback from our family, so uh, you, that's, there's nothing like that. Okay. I think there's really mm -hmm. nothing like that. Um, and um, when when kids and families are saying they feel the support, they feel included, they feel like there's progress, they feel like, um, um, you know, we, we, we go out of our way to um, create that environment. Um, you know, it, it is who we are and what we are here in the Berkshire. So it was, it was a really nice meeting, so. So I would like to give a shout out to the school committee because you always are eager to support whatever I bring to the table, and that is evident in what we are able to do here and the programs that we've been able to support. So, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna you add that as part of the program <laughs> <laughs> today. I'm we're gonna, gonna put give, that I'm gonna give grief on this. You sure are, I'm gonna call Nancy. you later. Um, unrelated <laughs> to this incredible news that you just uh, shared. Uh, do you have um, students who are helping you, you the um, Special Olympics teams? Oh, yes. Can you oh, talk yes. a little bit about that? Well, I, I am not in charge of that okay. aspect of it, but it's, and it's forming right now. But we do have students that take part, not only in supporting our athletes when they go, but take part in helping the run program. the event. So I'm going to have um, some of our students and staff report on that. Yeah, because that's a really cool part and of it. And there are always pictures posted, oh, and, and it shows our it. kids, mm -hmm. our kids, who are not at the special education right. project um, in the Special Olympics. They're helping, yes. leading, mm -hmm. whatever. It's really 
It's great. That whole school. It really is. Anyone else with a comment there? Sandy, nice we're lucky. We're fortunate in terms of, and also how you've grown the overall approach to dealing with the issues yes. our kids are facing. Good point. It's, so it's, and with less and less, thank you, the state of Massachusetts. Well, it's not if we place. have something to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. That's it. Okay, we're on to new business, which Story's takes us here. to, yes, she is. we have an overnight field trip. <laughs> um, Victoria Alden has submitted it. Victoria Wood, and there she is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you want to present it? Victoria? Yes. yes, can you hear me? Yes, um, everybody, it's 12A, if you've gotten to it, mm -hmm. the senior class trip, go to it. So I have been the um, class advisor for the last four years, and this group has had a goal since the beginning that they wanted to have an overnight field trip, so they have been diligent in their fundraising. They have fundraised um, over, well over $6,000 um, and they have close to 6,000 saved after the prom that we put on last year. Um, so that's quite large in, in consideration with what other classes have, have raised in the past. So what we're planning on doing is lofty, um, but hopefully it'll be, um, uh, hopefully we'll be able to, to, to follow through on it. Um, so the students uh, have had a lot of choice in this um, activity and they have, they put together the leadership put together a slideshow of three options that they came up with that through talking with their classmates, this is a smaller group, um, so they wanted to make sure that everybody had a voice. They put out a Google form and they had students, they invited students to give feedback and vote on the trip that they wanted, so that all that I'm presenting to you is student created. Um, so they want to start by, we would be leaving on Tuesday, May 28th. Um, and this is all to accommodate, those are really the only two days that we have available for us, given that last week for seniors. This is traditionally the week we go. Monday, there's going to be um, the Memorial Day parades. Wednesday, we need to get back in time for um, the Senior Awards Banquet. And then Friday, they have graduation practice. They graduate on Saturday. So it's a busy week. Um, so they wanted to start by going whitewater rafting at a group called Wild Waters in Warrensburg, New York. This has been a location that previous classes have gone to. I chaperoned one event there um, on a previous uh, senior trip, I believe in 2019. Um, very fun, very incredibly professional. They provide everything that students need. Um, if it's a cold and rainy day, they, they provide a wetsuit and a booty free of charge. Um, they provide the helmet, the personal flotation device, the paddles, um, and transportation to the river and a New York State licensed guide. Um, they also include a lunch and a snack. It's a longer activity, but it's a really great um, bonding activity. The students get to experience kayaking, not really, it's not kayaking, it's but white water rafting down. Um, <laughs> Uh, and so they all do a wonderful job. They stop halfway through for lunch that is provided. Um, then what they would want to do, I have a tentative um, hotel um, reservation at a place we stayed actually in 2019, the Country Inn and Suites by Radisson, right in Queensbury, New York. Um, they're great. They put us all on the same um, floor so that we have you know, chaperones have easy access to students. They have an indoor and outdoor pool and a buffet breakfast that's included. The one point that we're trying to decide upon, just given money, um, the students were considering doing a dinner cruise with a DJ on Lake George, so the Mohegan Boat Company goes out. Um, however, in order to reserve that, in order to get that boat to go out during this time period, um, you have to pay for a minimum of 80 people. That's the only way they'll release the boat. So we've done this in the past. Um, it's much more expensive. And this group of students was thinking about, well, we have a class size of, we, we have a very small class size this year, and um, only about 20 to 25 will be attending. So they're trying to decide, is that worth it? Um, and if that's not worth it, then they're considering um, reserving a private room in for dinner, like on the lake, and we have a couple options. Um, if we decide to do the dinner cruise, we board at 6.30, um, 
and it would be just us, so it's almost like it acts like a new little mini prom for them. Um, they stay out from 7 to 9, a buffet dinner is served, and there is a DJ provided, and there's dancing and a beautiful sunset. Um, we were over to the hotel at 9.30, there would be a little bit of free time, I would allow the students to enjoy the pool, um, and then come up with a appropriate um, curfew hour. And then we would wake up the next morning, and they wanted to go to a place called the Fun Spot, which is an indoor-outdoor adventure zone. Again, this is a place that um, we have been on previous senior trips, whether they be day trips or um, or overnight trips. Um, and this location has plenty of snacks available and tons of opportunities to participate in mini golf, go karts, laser tag, a ninja challenge course, and roller skating all provided for the cost of $20 per hour and um, they or $20 and they get two hours of unlimited time. Shorter than ideally what I would want to do normally. However, we have to get on the road and get them back so that they can come back to their awards night that starts at 6.30, 6 or 6.30. <laughs> so that is our we're tired just listening to you. <laughs> I was like, at least they'll I'm sleep exhausted. on the way back. <laughs> um, Victoria? They, they want to stop at Martha's Jammy Cream as well. That's right across the street. <laughs> they have the famous ice cream, so we'll get a little, little sugar rush. Uh, okay. Um, given the, the expense of this trip, are there any students who were not able to go because of financial reasons? No, that is not, um, that's, that's something that these students have considered throughout this entire process, and that's why they've wanted to fundraise so vigorously. They do not want costs to be prohibited to students. If cost becomes prohibited to any students, obviously we do ask for, there is going to be some out-of-pocket money for students um, just considering whatever they choose to do, and it also helps us finalize the, the, the number of students attending. If cost is prohibited, um, there, there are avenues um, for scholarship that we always put forward. Okay, great. Just, I mean, you know, being a graduate of Van Everett, you know that there were times when, um, particularly the high school office was faced with students who wanted to go and money was an issue, so I'm glad you've taken all of that into consideration. Um, and if the students are saying, that it, they could do it. I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Other questions from the school committee for Victoria? No. Wow. See, that's what happens when you bombard us with everything. <laughs> then, based on that, let's take um, a vote. Um, let's start. Oh, we, we need a motion. We need a oh, motion. I thought we had. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, All right. You, Go ahead, Nancy. I, I, I move to um, approve the senior class trip with Victoria Alden and to Queensbury and to all the other places they're going to go. Second. Okay. Let's just add that it's a Lake George and it um, is the, the 28th and 29th of May. What did you add? That? No, I was just saying, I would just say it's the overnight class, senior class trip. Overnight senior class trip. but the dates of May 28th and May 29th, okay, 2024. All right, start. Art? Yes. Jim? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Dennis? Aye. Thank you. David? Yes. Um, Kyle? Aye. Yes. Kim? Yes. And Carl's not back, so I'm a yes. Thank you, and awesome. have a wonderful time, <laughs> yes, and make right. sure it's sunny. <laughs> Thank you, yes. We hope it's very sunny. The last time we were on, or the last time I went on this trip, it was rainy and stormy and cold, but they still had fun. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much. much. Thanks, Ter. Thanks for sticking it out. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to review and approval of the academic calendar. Yes, so um, we made a change, I, I don't know, uh, I think to the calendar that might have previously been in their packet. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so we did a few updates. I we we go over this and re go over this and check it, uh, you know, 10, 12 times, and then find something every time. So this morning we did our final check before we came to um, school committee, and, and we did find a, a few things. But we also wanted to um, share that. Um, the process is normally that we um, bring this to everybody. We also share it with um, the SBREA and get their feedback. And in listening to feedback from um, our, our um, faculty and staff, what we decided to do, we feel very strongly um, about um, our plan, which is to put our faculty meetings um, on one day and our professional development back to back so that we can maximize the amount of time that teachers and faculty and staff can work together um, and we can oh, great. you know deliver what what we're they're going to be doing and then they have that time in the next day but we also heard um, concerns about um, about it always being a certain day so um, Again, we, we, so we wanted to take a look at it, and what we were able to do was um, keep it either on a Wednesday or a Thursday. So um, we have moved three of the half days from Wednesdays to Thursdays um, a, in an effort to um, you know, hear and react to what um, the feedback has been. So Thank other you. than that, I don't think there is any other change um, other than you know maybe somebody was in the wrong color um, you know mm -hmm. un unintentionally but um, so we would ask because I think families are starting to ask I know when I was at M um, math night families were talking to me about um, the schedule for next year so we'd love to be able to get this done and then um, get it out for families planning okay I'll entertain a motion to approve the calendar so, so moved <laughs> second <laughs> That was Jim and Nancy. Um, <laughs> so, any comments? Too much fun. Yes. What are the, um, <laughs> the PD days that don't have? Is that an all day? No school? No, or half. Half. there's, there's two no? Full days. There are two. There are two. Full days. Two, that's a full day. Okay. Yeah. Right. Next year there are two full days. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. Oh, okay. And there's also one extra day. There's 184 days, days for faculty right. and staff. Okay. Okay, any other questions regarding this? All right, in that case, let's move ahead on a vote. Kyle? Yes. Kim? Yes. Okay, and no Carl there. So let's, um, Art? Art? Yes. Jim? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Dennis? Yes. David? Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay. So we have, we know there'll be another change at some point. I'm hoping not. <laughs> but we'll, for right now, we're very happy to say that we have approved the academic calendar for FY25. All right. Um, Mount Everett Program Studies. All right. Um, are we going to have the Mount Everett principal give us any overview here? Mr. Carpenter, would you like to come on up? Sure. We'd love to have you right here. You can come here if you'd like. Yeah. There's plenty of space today. All inclusive. <laughs> I put your name in the program. Thank you. <laughs> she is going to continue to give me great. So um, we sent out to you uh, the program of studies yes. in its entirety. Um, as well as the um, pages. change log. Uh, we include the change log um, just because year to year the program of study sometimes looks very similar. Uh, and the change log is just kind of a cheat sheet on what was edited or what, was, what are new courses or if we omit any courses um, that are included. Um, I think we've done a lot of work over the last five years in terms of um, getting uh, the program of studies to where it is in terms of what it looks like stylistically um, in the way the departments are set up as well as the information that we have on our early college program um, and earlier in the, in the book um, some more information on the innovative pathways that we have innovation pathways that we have um, 
you know, we've had our own pathways in there for the last few years, um, but now it's a more complete set with the new um, innovation yeah. pathways. Um, in terms of like new courses, uh, there's some that are um, mixed in, um, mostly elective classes um, to give the students more options. Uh, obviously with the program of studies, um, when you look at like the number of English classes we offer, uh, those electives don't always all run year to year. Uh, we put it out to the students in course selection sheets. They will pick the classes that interest them and then we'll run the classes that have the most interest. Um, so uh, for instance, if I was an English teacher teaching five classes, um, if I was the uh, you know sophomore um, English teacher, I would have three uh, classes that are traditional sophomore classes and then I might have four electives to each semester um, and so in the program of studies there might be six electives that I would could teach I wouldn't teach all six of them it would be based on who's interested in what and year to year uh, that changes sometimes for the students you know we have some electives and especially history that um, it's overwhelming there's 28 kids that want to take it and so we end up offering the same elective in the fall and the spring because you, you don't want to put 28 students in that one class. Mm -hmm. There's other times where, um, especially in history, we'll, we'll have the same two electives run fall, spring in concurrent years or three years in a row because of the interest in those two classes. Um, uh, obviously, um, we're excited about some of the new offerings. Um, we have a, a section on um, the work we've been doing with Transcend and the Southern Burke Studio Experience. Mm -hmm. uh, we lift, listed two offerings to sort of start that process uh, that we're excited about. Uh, that's probably going to grow, um, but for next year we kind of focused on the Studio 101 experience, which is wide open, um, and then one that was geared more towards um, construction and building and home oh, design cool. and things like that. Oh, so very cool. um, we're excited about that as well. Um, so, does anyone have any questions, or can I clarify anything? Sure, go ahead. Yes, uh, you know, on, on your on your change log, yep. you know, you have several entities that are, to be quite frank, not well defined. What do you mean by something was edited? Like, so, for example, graduation requirements. What does it mean when it was edited? So edited means we made some changes in the language. Some of it are uh, grammatical errors that we might not have caught the year before. Some of it is additional information. Um, some of it can be um, uh, simple things like we change the name of a class based on the fact that now we have an offering that's early college. Um, and so we made some changes in the names of classes. So students could differentiate between what was the early college class and what may be just a regular elective for underclassmen. Yeah, that I can easily understand. However, you know, you also have some courses in there that you've just marked as deleted, and, but you don't state at all what that course was. You know, could you define That's those in the packet. for us? We got the, I, we got the whole We got the packet. Yeah. We got I mean, the if, packet. If you want to know those, I'll have to go back to last year's program of studies. Uh, I would say, you know, for most of the cases, there are classes that were deleted because now we have early college offerings. I would so. suggest that if you do this next time, that you should probably put the name of, of what was the course that was deleted in there. Yeah, we can do that, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would That's sure appreciate getting a yeah. copy of that. Um, but we all received, I'm sure it was in your pack, we all received the complete course of study. So therefore, in the email packet, so, so therefore, you, what you do is you just take this sheet and go um, to each. It was, it, it's in the, it was what in we received email, yeah. by email. We received the entire course study. There are copies there are right extra here, copies, too. Dennis, if you want one of those. Do you want one yeah, of the copies, Richard? I, I did not ever receive one. Yes, well, there's mm -hmm. copies. It was I emailed to you, Dennis, but... But we got a copy right here. We have a copy right here. We're going to take a copy also. Mm -hmm. No, you yeah. can't do that. You have to... <laughs> oh, no. It is not a phone document. <laughs> right, no. <laughs> you have to pay. Can you give... Thank you. Yeah. Since my printer is still not working. Um, <laughs> so that's... Um, what Jesse did is gave us a cheat sheet so that we could match up like 
graduation requirements, and then you just have it in here, and he did it in the order of which um, the, the uh, program of studies is organized. So, so that probably, Dennis, would address the issues that you have. Just, I know it's a major task, but just line up the two documents when you, when you um, go through it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Um, any questions out in Zoom land? Okay. All right, then we're ready to take a vote. I have one question. Yes, sir. Um, maybe because I don't have children in the school anymore, I was very confused at trying to figure all this out. So I'm going to have to come in and sit down with Jesse and go over this because it's, it's overwhelming. In, in what way? Because if you give a specific, we could look at it in the future. I, I or can't. Can look it's at it. just sitting down to try to figure all this out and what courses. Like, say, there's 12 English courses, mm -hmm. but are all 12, all 12 English courses probably won't be offered next year. But that, that's we don't. in the material that's explained. In, in the program yeah, of studies. I, I was re reading it, but it's still, I'd like to sit down with Jesse and go over it because oh, I'd sure. like to yeah. learn more about it. You got sure over there. Um, the only thing that I would suggest that would be helpful is page numbers on this sheet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it, it might make it, you know, sure. a faster movement. But I really appreciate all the work. All right, so let's start with a vote. Art. I'm abstaining. Okay, Jim. Yes. Nancy. Yes. Okay, Sarah. Yes. Dennis. Abstain. Okay. Um, David. Abstain. And Kyle. Yes. Kimberly. Kim. Abstain. Oh my God. Yeah, you guys can't all abstain. I can't make it. I'm a Bob, yes. Come on. How many yeses do we have? Can the yeses raise their hands? One, two, three, four. And Kyle. Kyle. And Kyle is five. Yeah, I'm a yes. I'm a yes, yep. Yeah. yeah, so that's five yeses. And we have four, four abstentions, so it passes. Okay. And we will move along, and Thank hopefully you. you're welcome, and we can address any issues related. Um, maybe we should have a student group that that walks the school committee through the program. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they the people they that don't know how to do it. They, they all understand. Yeah. It's a good idea, actually. Okay. It's <laughs> good um, idea. The review of the Student Opportunities Act grant, is this the bad news you want to extend? No, I think that was Ju Julie. Julie used that as her report. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, All right. So we're I fine. didn't realize it was a separate. She just went wild and went right into it. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I didn't realize. <laughs> All but look right. And we thank you. Yeah, I was yes. about to say. <laughs> Update well, on yeah. district initiatives, transcend early college innovation pathways. I mean, I don't think we have anything additional to say in early college and innovation pathways tonight. Um, I think we I could just. Say that we have oh, dear. Oh, dear. We're muting. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, so I think uh, really we could just talk about Transcend, and anybody who was at the community meeting can can feel free to jump in. Um, but uh, we had our uh, community meeting. Uh, I feel like we've been here. Was it Tuesday night? Tuesday night. Um, yeah, where we've been we here had, every night. You have been. Um, and uh, it was a, a great turnout of about 35 people um, who from the community who. Uh, have been That's working great. on um, uh, the next phase and it was really nice I think because the core team that's always working um, that we meet weekly but um, the design team um, some of them were presenters uh, as part of the community meeting so I'll let our one of our presenters say a few words uh, about the experience but um, the goal of the meeting was to get to uh, forming subcommittees um, to carry on the work based on, um, you know, the different uh, parts of the initiative.
that are going to be taking place next year and for years to come. So, um, and talking about ways to involve um, others and um, and uh, it's it's a big undertaking because it's um, it's a complex uh, <laughs> initiative that we're taking on, um, and it's involving a lot of people, um, which is sometimes can be tricky to manage. So we're actually really trying hard to um, stay true to the process, um, and um, and I think um, we're learning a lot about each other and about our community and about ways to um, to to do this type of work. So um, it's exciting and innovative and. Um, and really the work and I'll let you say one thing that the only other piece I will add or say whatever you want about it but, um, the uh, the other piece is that I've had uh, the opportunity to uh, talk with our transcend team and actually even um, some of the uh, other divisions of transcend that I didn't even know existed um, uh, about our continued work with the organization and um, I can't say everything yet because nothing's final, but there are um, a bunch of partners and um, other uh, portions of the Transcend organization that are very hopeful and excited about continuing the work with us and um, and maybe getting to a point where we can share it and um, um, maybe even nationally. So it's pretty exciting. That's great. Congratulations. I, I'm just going to let her talk about it. Yeah, I was just going to say, nice job. My my experience on was it, it was when no it wasn't Wednesday it was Tuesday. It was Tuesday. Um, I have to tell you to have our towns represented by real leaders in their communities to look around at the tables and see the brain wealth the energy that was there and you realize we've got students. We've got our principal, superintendent. We've got teachers involved. Admin, it is the whole admin team. The whole admin team, and then people who were willing to give up their time to make this work. And these are all really busy people. And the fact that they said, "Look, one of our former school committee members brought this up and said." really think we have to reposition the way these groups are going because it was setting up subcommittees and everybody bought into more work. They felt that, yeah, we're going to, to tackle this in a slightly different way. You, you didn't have anybody pulling back and, and saying, no, I, I don't want to. The energy and to see the only, I didn't see anybody from Alford. But aside from Alford, was there anyone from the community? The other four towns were like really represented. I don't know the answer to that off the top mm -hmm. of my head because there's people that are in the group that maybe didn't make it this time who so oh, right. I would oh, have to check on that. That's true. We do have that. I'm pretty sure we have some wide representation. And we if do. not, we're going to recruit. So <laughs> there it is. And the fact that what this can mean for our district with having this kind of buy-in is, is absolutely wonderful because it will change and, and build upon everything positive that exists in Mount, at Mount Everett. And it goes back even through the elementary school. Yes, the district wide. Um, apropos of that, I didn't bring it up then, but um, someone contacted me who said she's been approached for some funding because of a, an initiative that in philanthropy that um, is existing and they want to spread from North County this organization but they know about us and didn't know previously the person who contacted me said I'm only going to contribute to this if it goes to Mount Everett so it's it's so important, you know, the kind of outreach that we're doing. But I just looked around that room and felt 
this is touchy feely. Um, I just felt that these were so many people engaged from really different areas, and some of them were people who, you know, are graduates. I mean, we had Green Agers Will Conklin there. We had um, involvement from Flying Cloud. We, I mean, all these different organizations. We had one of my select board members, Renee Wood, there. We, I mean, it just was such a positive energy that was going on in, in that room. And that's, and, and the fact that Mary McGurn said, I've got to be there. Yeah. I've mm -hmm. got to be there. Mm -hmm. So I think we're just really, and I, Beth, I have to give you credit here. The woman who likes to make sure everything is under control mm -hmm. and you know the 12 next steps, you like. Didn't I, quite I, go that way. No. Didn't go that way. It was like, I remember when Gwen Carpenter was playing basketball here, it was like she had five moves ahead all planned out. I have 12, Jesse. Just tell her that. <laughs> okay? And, and that's what Beth usually likes. And she let the group go where it wanted to go, and whether it was our student representatives. Ever. So I could spend too much time talking about this, <laughs> but it's very exciting, and it's scary in some ways. Yeah. Well, so that's it. <laughs> yep. So I've been going to the meetings too. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my impression, like yours, Bonnie, is that something special is happening here. This is not, you know, I, I know a lot about traditional education, having lived in that for most of my adult life. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the, the feeling out of that meeting, you know, was that, uh, yeah, that more than, the school is becoming more than the school. It's becoming a community, and that's, that's really that's special. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. That's a really great special. way to put it. Yeah. Okay. So. So, that's where, you know, more good things will come. Yeah. And at least we had that before you got uh, Debbie Downer from the state. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, all right. Is that her name? Is that her actual name? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know whose name it's going to be, but it's going to have a name yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. So, Sarah, why don't we turn it over to you, the most powerful woman in South County. <laughs> wow. wow, that is not, that's huge. I see your name's right here. I know it, who it is. <laughs> I, we don't have any updates. Um, just patiently waiting for town meetings to come and go. So yeah, that's it. Let's yeah. hope for the best. Mm -hmm. Really, let's hope for the best mm -hmm. there. Um, Nancy. So the newsletter is um, pending. Pretty much all the articles are in or close to done. Um, I want to follow up and just say briefly that I got the luck of writing the um, writing an article on on the new division that's being created, and I think the strongest thing in my my takeaway doing the research um, and kind of cobbling it all together was that. The stakeholders for the change is the community and the engagement of the entire community and really, really, really pushing that the community is the stakeholder. Uh, that um, it's our children, it's our communities, it's teaching our children how to be part of our communities and teaching our community how to be part of our district. And it's really exciting. Um, and the rest of the newsletters, the budget, and some other really great stuff. So it's, it's going it's to be very good. <laughs> And it's all on Beth's hands now. Thank you. Well, some of them are yeah. Um, the policy subcommittee. So Dennis was unable to attend, and Carl is no longer <laughs> there. <laughs> so guess what? I will tell you the following as the person who gets the oh, chair fill short in. End yeah. Short end of the stick. Thanks. <laughs> um, there was a, a one discussion which led to a motion that was, is brought here is that um, our school committee engage MASC in working with us to completely redo the policy manual. Not redo, redo where necessary. Um, 
and that motion was passed by the policy subcommittee to bring here. One of the questions was the cost, and the, we previously paid about over 10 years ago about a little over 6,000, or 6,500, is that what it was? Yep. So um, Glenn Kucher said it will cost me um, pastrami sandwich <laughs> and added to it kishka, <laughs> all from the Lower East Side, but it's now 10,500 paid out over three years. Oh. Paid out over three years. Mm -hmm. um, and they will work hand in hand as they did with you guys um, previously to go through the entire manual where it's okay, it stays okay, where there are revisions. And just a little bit of a background, um, the sense was that we came away from the last MASC, um, and, and all of you get the newsletter, we came with so many policies to review, adapt, or accept from MASC. We've only managed to get through four of them. Thank you, Dennis, for at least getting us through those four. But we have, without even touching the others, we have something like 25 more <gasps> policies that are there on the plate. So the policy subcommittee is recommending to the full school committee that we engage MASC to um, work with the just work with the policy subcommittee to create an updated policy manual, mm -hmm. and that would then obviously be going to the full school committee after the policy committee um, reviews everything. But the approval would be now for the whole school committee, I'll entertain a motion to this effect, for the whole school committee to approve the engaging um, of MASC for a price of 10,500 to be paid out over three years to take on the revision of our policy manual. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. And, can I give Jim credit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm ahead one. She gets the. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that teamwork. We we'll planned that. this. <laughs> oh, so she, it's her turn to get the second? Is that what you said? In that case, Art made the motion. Nancy gets the seconded. Um, questions, discussion. Okay. All right. Seeing none, let's move ahead on a vote. Oh, is to the, whoop, wait. Is there a hand up? Kim, is your hand up? Oh, it's just a mouse, never mind. Oh, just a mouse, just okay. A mouse. In that case, let's start with a vote. Kyle? Yes. Kim? Kim? <laughs> Shock, <Dee -Dee. laughs> Kim? I'll get back to you, Kim. Wait, she, I need yes. Oh, yes. it's a yes, okay. Art? Yes. Jim? Yes. Nancy? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Dennis? No. Um, David. Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay, so one no and remaining yeses. It's passed. I will speak to Glenn Kucher again. Personnel and negotiations, we have not met. Um, I did sign finally a, thank you, Beth, um, a finally put together all the different parts. Integrated, we like to call it. Oh, integrated contracts. An yeah. integrated contract yes. with the SBREA. Right. Just as we come up to the next That's yeah, perfect. We just nailed it, yeah. Yeah, so I signed that. Buildings and grounds, Art? Yeah, Okay. Jim? Okay. Okay, so this time I can't prepare. <laughs> Excellent. Bonnie's coaching. Um, we are at point of um, generating the um, instrument that's going to go to all of us in terms of Beth's evaluation. The way that that works, as I think most of you know, is we take Beth's um, 
uh, goals and the indicators and the evidence that we all approved in the fall. And we add um, a rating system to it. Uh, this year we're gonna try to do it with a secure- uh, Excuse um, me, survey monkey. survey monkey. Survey monkey. So you'll get it all electronically. Um, I urge everybody to respond to it. Uh, it is essentially our uh, primary duty is to is to um, hire and supervise the superintendent to run our school district. It's also our responsibility to the voters who put us in these jobs. Um, shouldn't take very long. Uh, I will then collate the information once I come back from drinking my last Mai Tai on Maui. Okay. <laughs> That's the wrong way to approach this more during. And, uh, I will collate the information and present While he's it, drinking uh, the Mai at which meeting? When are we present it? Um, the first, meeting, the in first meeting in I June. Think it's June the, at the first meeting June in June. You, everybody will get the survey on the 20th of May with the closing date being the 31st. 30th, yes, 31st, yes, there'll be, that'll, there'll be a, a dead stop on the 31st. So you need to get it. When you get it, you need to send it back to us as soon as you can. Okay. And I just want to reiterate what you said. It is actual duty of the school committee yeah. to do this evaluation of the person that we hired. Yeah. Are there any, the, the, the form that you will get will say what the, what the uh, uh, goal and the indicators were and there'll be a place where you can check uh, uh, your rating and there will be a place for comments if you if you choose to further comment and, and you, everybody you don't have to comment but you do have to check the please answers. comment because we then have to write it <laughs> um and beth will has supplied everybody with those support documents right. right everybody has the and if anybody needs a new copy of it yeah let us know because that's the basis upon which you do the evaluation and um Yes. The comments are really appreciated in order to have a, a representative report. Nancy. Um, is it possible for the document to be included um, with the link so that we can refer to it as we go? It's a fairly uh, long document. But um, I mean, uh, just a link to the document. A link to the document is possible. You can do that documents. in the introduction of your survey monkey. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. Oh, you can okay. Good, good All idea. Right. All right, so let's remember that or note it. <laughs> Shall. <laughs> well, no, this is Jim's responsibility. Okay, as so chair. the. In your intro. When the, in the like, survey know, monkey I, I is. It, yeah. Yeah. In the in intro. In the intro to the survey. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that. Good idea. I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything else for us? It, well, it's a long document. The survey, the actual survey instrument is two pages. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, no, it'll be longer. But yeah, that's fine. You can put more, it right in. You put it right, right in. Yeah, it, it's it easy out. to fill okay. out, though. It's very yeah. easy to fill out. It's okay. really not hard at all. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, Carl's not here. The, the, that committee didn't meet. Um, Dennis, do you have anything to say from the land of warrants? No. Nope. Okay, curriculum subcommittee. But we had a nice intimate. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> non quorum <laughs> discussion. So my bad. It's ad hoc anyway. And since it's ad hoc, it was not. Doesn't matter. But I, Julie, you posted that the what we went through. I didn't mm -hmm. post it. I just mm -hmm. sent it to you two. Okay. Yeah. We can can post it if you want. Well, there was certain, particularly, you had that wonderful chart that shows how everything integrates. One of the issues, yes. you know, that comes up for us is what is a school committee, are you allowed to do as members, where 
you know, the line is drawn. And it was a great discussion with Beth and Julie in terms of the administrative protocol of how things move ahead. Do, instead of me saying it, you guys are here, do you want to explain um, what we see, what you guys, you guys, what our leadership believes is the protocol for handling curriculum um, changes, issues, et cetera? So I think we should just start with the fact that um, curriculum is the purview of, of district administration. And in a lot of school districts, they don't even do an, a, a curriculum subcommittee because people don't want to confuse those lines, right? Mm -hmm. Here, we, you know, and I, I did it in, in the other district that I worked in too, we have an ad hoc curriculum committee because we're super proud of the process that we go through and of sharing the work that our faculty and staff is doing. So uh, it's really more informational um, on the process. Um, so I think what we can just do is is post the PowerPoint up to um, with the agenda for the curriculum, um, the ad hoc curriculum meeting that was there, um, because it, you really have to take a look at it. It's a pretty expansive document, and, and we could have probably put it up on the screen to make it easier to talk about. But we did a document that if you went to opening days, we did it for faculty and staff, and we actually did it as an administrative team um, when we were just planning uh, over the summer to say we kind of were a little overwhelmed at first with all the things going on so for ourselves we kind of put up the um, elements of our strategy for continuous improvement right our, our four uh, main goals and then we um, put all of the initiatives and the grants and all of those um, and and figured out how they tied in with those areas. And then um, Julie did a really nice job the other day of highlighting even past that um, what specific elements um, were under each one of those grants or ways that they were funded. And what it really showed was all the tremendous work that we have been doing um, has been mostly or all grant funded. So it stays away from um, our ability to keep our faculty and staff intact and give them the professional development and needs. So today we actually had that question from the reviewer from the state around why are we seeing districts who are really struggling at this point financially with staffing and, and challenges and um, she was uh, really impressed with how we have managed our um, improving our curriculum instruction, our programming in-house, and still maintaining our faculty and staff at the levels that we have. Um, it is not common, and so we should be really proud of that. But I think we're going to, we, we talked about adding on yeah. to um, this document that you're referring to and, um, and, and showing the bigger picture for other people. Uh, Process-wise, do you want to talk about that, or do you not? Do you want to? Well, just... I was just going to say maybe in the sake of time, I could just do it in my next report since it's already close to 8:30. <laughs> and I will just do one thing that I learned that really makes okay. it helpful is when this whole philanthropy curriculum piece came to me, and the person who brought it thought, you know, okay, she'll take care of it. Well, she kind of did. I went to Beth and I said, well, what's the protocol here? Do I take it to Jesse? Do I do this? And it's important for us to know if an issue comes to you, first of all, we have no power to change the curriculum you know, ad hoc method, um, and that the protocol is very much, it goes to the superintendent, who then has it go to our curriculum, who sees the big picture of how everything integrates. So hopefully I save myself by telling the person, I can't answer this question now until I get information. But that's the biggest thing that I came with in terms of all of us on the school committee. That's a good point. Curriculum is not our purview. There is a protocol in place and we bring any initiatives that we're approached with to the superintendent first who knows the pathway. 
Well, we want to make sure it's properly vetted, right? There's right. an actual process, mm -hmm. and we want to make sure it's high quality, which is what um, Julie starts with. But we also want to involve our faculty and staff and our administration right. in making sure that it's all, um, uh, as you can see, that's how we got down to having someone like Jane, who is a mm -hmm. curriculum leader in a particular area, be here to present that. Everybody needs to be involved in the decision, and we want to make sure that it is the highest quality possible for our students and staff. So. Um, that's, that's really the only reason we're following that protocol that way. And Jim? I have just mm -hmm. a short comment about that. You know, you're doing a tremendous amount of work. I understand that. The proof that something's happening is you sent parents home with math games to play with their kids. Something's happening here. Yeah, yeah. Nobody ever gave me a math game to play with my kids. Okay. They were fighting for them. They had. They were going home. They were coming home with a with a baggie. Thank you. There's a whole bunch that. of kids now who are not going to yeah. know that math is math is truth. And yeah. the parents are baking. Math is what? <laughs> <laughs> the parents are baking numbers. <laughs> it is. Okay. Thank you for that comment. All right, Carl is here. Uh, Kyle, anything with the Eagle Fund? I have not heard anything. Okay. Um, early childhood, nope. nope. And no child care program. Kim, anything community health advisory? I don't think they've They're met. They haven't met. Okay. Yeah. And we haven't done ad hoc regional. So let's move on to future items. <laughs> um, I am. I haven't connected yet with the audit, but you know we were working on budget, so let me touch base with them. Thank you. I think they had moved on. They're they're, they're almost caught up, is what I understand. Yeah, because so. I saw that in one of your messages. Yes. It, yes. Yeah, okay. One of my yeah. All right. Yeah. Going. And you heard some examples of our collaboration. Yes. And what was so nice is to see. We had a whole team go up for um, track and field oh, wow. to a competition at the beginning of the week. Nice. So that As was we heard, really they all started. All of the groups had yep, groups exactly yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. And we had started. We started this baseball and softball season with wins. All good. Okay. <laughs> yes, and at least one tennis win. And, and one tennis exactly. <laughs> Who wants the honor of uh, a journey? So moved. <laughs> Somebody else has to second. second. Jim and I have been doing second. it all night. Second, Sarah. <laughs> okay. We gave him one. All right. Any <laughs> objection to adjourning? Table. Seeing none, we are adjourned at 8:20. Thank you all. Oh, okay. Will they yeah. special Olympics?